Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another real estate podcast. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO. That's right, Chief Everything Officer here at Independence Title, bringing to you another amazing interview. You know, when we people ask us why we do these podcasts, I always say because we love to bring education, inspiration, motivation, and some really cool you-know-what. So today we have some really cool stuff we're going to talk about. I have my friend Jordan Isro, who lives in my community. He'll talk a little bit about what he does. There's some fantastic stuff he's doing. But more importantly, he just launched a brand new mobile app that I know we're going to be using, and I think it's going to change the way the world sees the legal field. So, Jordan, welcome to the show today. Thank you, King. I appreciate you, Kevin. This is uh, an awesome opportunity, and I love what you set up here. Hopefully, we get some uh, some good stuff with people out there. Yeah, so let's break the ice with everyone and just tell everyone a little bit about you, your family, where you live, where you grew up, uh, and most importantly, why did you become an attorney? All good questions. My name is Jordan Isro. I am from South Florida, born and raised here in Boca Raton. I am a Floridian through and through. <clears throat> to high school in Fort Lauderdale, Pinecrest. Went to undergraduate, University of Florida, go Gators. Went to law school and business school in Miami, go Canes as well. And after that, I made the trek, I guess, the of what every Floridian does at some point in their life to decide they need to try something else. So I moved to New York, right? That's, that's the, the, the dream I've always had. While there, I ended up uh, becoming an assistant attorney general for the state of New York in their social justice division for litigation. While also there, I met my now wife, Jessica. And from there, we made the move back to South Florida where I started practicing in commercial litigation. Uh, that was very exciting, kind of working with big companies, uh, big dollars, and just really interesting issues. Um, at some point, I was fortunate enough to be asked by one of my clients to join them as their first ever general counsel. It's called Oxygen Development. They were a contract manufacturer of cosmetics, of all things, based right here in uh, Palm Beach. Uh, I spent four years doing that, learned the intricacies of business, which I think a lot of lawyers, you know, it's one thing to read about it in a book. It's another thing to sit in the, uh, the executive conference room and, uh, and have those discussions that are really not easy sometimes, and discussions that really are uh, meaningful in the way that it's not just academic, it's, it's the real deal. Um, and from there, I, I had an opportunity to go back into private practice where I was doing uh, complex litigation again, I was chairing a litigation group down here in South Florida for a firm called Government Law Group. Uh, it was a great opportunity to kind of get back into the swing of uh, private practice after being in house for four years. Um, but what it really showed me after this entire journey, Kevin, was that seeing the, the legal industry from so many different angles, especially being a client of legal services while a general counsel, was that the, the legal industry was somewhat broken. And it wasn't just on the client side of how you procure legal services, but also as a practicing lawyer. I think there's a lot of lawyers who will agree, and there are some who will agree but won't admit it, that the way the legal profession has evolved is just that. It hasn't evolved. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I'm hoping that it not only benefits people to be able to access legal services easier in a more transparent way, similar to how they access just about every other service in modern day, but also gives lawyers an alternative opportunity of how to generate business for themselves and make a use out of their legal profession in a way other than the traditional model of being at a law firm and just doing it the, the old fashioned way. All right. Well, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, obviously, everyone sees if they're watching this on uh, YouTube and the video, they'll see the link below. Uh, but we'll cover that in a little bit. More importantly, you know, I met you and you're not your typical attorney. Right. So when we talk about I was actually talking, I think it's kind of similar in, in the financial space. So I was talking with a certified financial planner yesterday uh, just about business, general business and stuff. And we said there is a true difference between being a financial planner at, at let's say, a big firm. Uh, and, or being an entrepreneur where you're building up an actual investing firm, right? There, there are two different aspects. And I think that goes to the same when you talk about being an attorney. Like you can be an attorney and work for a firm, maybe even have your own firm, but there's also a difference of being an attorney, 
but also being an entrepreneur and trying to build a firm or and try and guide people and motivate people and, and things like that. So I think what you're doing is great. Uh, I met you through your election. Obviously, you are a, a sitting city commissioner up in up in Parkland. Tell a little bit about why you did that. I mean, we, we usually see and I wonder if there's a connection to attorneys. A lot of times we see attorneys get on onto these city positions. Uh, why why'd you decide to do that? Growing up, I've always wanted to get involved in some sort of public office, some community, uh, I guess, community role. And, and it's because I've had a lot of role models at just different stages of my life who have been involved in different facets of government. And what it showed me was that you have the ability to actually make a change and make an impact in ways that are just beyond just your, your more kind of local sphere, your local circle. And when I first moved down to South Florida after being in New York, um, I, I had always moved around a lot as a kid. My, my childhood was, you know, every couple of years we were moving to a different house and uh, mostly because my mom loved interior designing and loved houses and she got bored, which God bless her. She was very good at it. But for kids, it can become a complicated concept. Um, so having been someone who would moved around a lot, when I came back down to South Florida and my wife who'd grown up in Parkland, you know, she said, I would like to kind of raise a family in Parkland. And I really knew nothing about it, which was kind of interesting to me because I grew up here my whole life. I always heard about Coral Springs. You know, that was always kind of the, what was known out to the West. Um, and when I first got a taste of it and I started meeting the people here, it was very obvious to me that this is a place that was very special that I wanted to spend, uh, you know, the long term and, and grow my family here. And the way I looked at it is, as someone who's always, always wanted to get involved, if I'm going to live somewhere for the foreseeable future and my family's going to be there, I believe it's in my best interest, it's in the community's best interest, my family's best interest to take a role and make sure that it's in the best possible place it can be. And that was what drove me to, to take on this role. Well, it's great. You're doing a great job. You know me. I'm, I'm very involved behind the scenes. People always ask me why I don't run. I say I'm better behind the scenes. Yes, the, the sixth uh, unofficial commissioner. Yeah, sometimes I speak my my mind sometimes, and it's it's not the best. So it's sometimes. No, I think I think it's important to speak your mind, and I think that's you know critical in where we are at these days. Is that um, you know while there's always going to be pushback and opinions of you know those against who who speak their mind, I don't think it should ever be a reason not to because once people stop speaking their mind, is when all of a sudden that ideas stop flowing and improvement and you know progress stops. So I think it's important. Well, it's good stuff. So let's talk. Let, let's break the ice a little bit from from the attorney stuff. What's your favorite thing to do in Parkland? My favorite thing to do in Parkland, uh, aside from just going to watch my kids play sports, which is one of the best things. You never know how much you're going to love it until you have a kid who's out in the field. Um, other than that, I think it's really just going out and, and just kind of being a part of the community, whether it's the farmer's market or any of the events we do here going to the, the library, which I think is completely underestimated, and, and I wish more people would take advantage of it, um, whether it's just hanging out at Park and Bagel, going to Carmela's, you know, having dinner at Malbec, these places that have just created its own ecosystem, our own community that is so kind of separate and apart from the general Broward, South Florida world. Yeah, I think it's a great, it really is a great community. We do some great things. Obviously, your favorite thing is, is playing sports, you know, unless you're playing t-ball against my son, then it's yeah. not so fun because, you know, we yeah. uh, we bring it. We bring our, yeah. our game every yeah. time. You sent me your game plan before our game. I saw it. <laughs> <I know. laughs> All right. So uh, before we jump into the mobile app, which is why we're doing this podcast, because, again, I think it's going to going to change the way the, the legal industry goes. You, you have your own law firm. Tell us a little bit about that. Israel uh, Legal. I do. So Israel Legal was born out of the concept of, in my mind, I differentiate between there's the practice of law and there's the business of law. Right? Pure counsel to me was about trying to change the business of law. Israel Legal is about changing the practice of law, of how I, as an attorney, believe and, and hope that people will see that there's a better way to provide legal services. It doesn't have to be the old fashioned with a big filing cabinet of papers behind you or kind of sitting in a old oak office, and, you know, by candlelight with a quill. You know, the, the reality is, is that the times they are a change in, Kevin, and you of all people understand that. But a lot of law firms, and a lot of lawyers have been not so quick to evolve or adapt. And so Israel Legal is about being able to provide real 
business legal services, whether it's dispute resolution and complex litigation, general counsel, you know, people come, they have HR issues, labor and employment. They have issues with uh, regulatory, OSHA, whatever you want to call it, of you know, dealing with the pandemic. New, new regulations come out on the fly. You have to be able to address them. Uh, real estate, financing, all those things that make a business a business. And separate from that is, you know, commercial transactions, whether it's real estate, you know, doing development programs or development projects, helping landlords deal with commercial leases, uh, all the things that kind of wrap up into a business uh, centric law firm, but doing it in a way that is using uh, modern technology, whether it's AI or certain softwares that gain efficiencies, alternative fee arrangements, separate and apart from just the traditional billable hour and and being there to actually provide real partnership to clients that give them the trust to know that they don't have to worry about calling me because they're going to get dinged for some you know point two that on their bill that it's something that's more of like a relationship that over time is actually beneficial for both parties as opposed to just the lawyer awesome yeah and you're doing great stuff i know some people that have used you and uh you know I, I think it's about having someone you know when i look at the title space and people are always like well why use you and i'm like because i'm going to have your back i'm going to tell you the the real the way it really is like the lowdown of what the industry is how successful you can be in it uh, i mentor a lot of people that are in my industry that want you know people that own title companies call me and reach out to me to talk to me and strategize what works what doesn't you know, I'm a real open book and I love to just share because part of that is exactly uh, what I'm doing in my space is what you're doing in your space. And that's trying to change the negativity of how people see it or how people are interacting in the current space to say you need to change like you need to adapt. And, and I'll never forget when COVID uh, first hit and everything got locked down and everyone's like, well, how are we going to do closings if we can't come into the office? We were the first title company in the entire state of Florida to pilot the online notarization program, wow. even before the state of Florida passed the law that you were able to do online notarization. Our underwriter was agreeing to do it, to take the risk that they knew it was coming uh, when they were going up to the next vote. So they agreed to say, we're going to do these. We're going to be the first company to do it. You're going to be the first title company to test it. And we're going to do this before anyone else because we know it's coming and we'll stand behind it with our insurance, uh, which is obviously the ultimate. You know, people say, well, if it's not legal, how do you have coverage? And it was because we agreed to, to stand by it. Uh, and, and those are the things that when COVID hit, people were like, we can't do online notarizations because all the online companies were book solid. You couldn't get them to do it where we had the software and we were doing our own closings in our own office uh, via a platform like this or, or Zoom. So, uh, you know, and, that, and that's what makes you the king. You have to change. You have to change with the tides. But more importantly, you have to have the mindset to want to learn what the future is going to be, which is where Pure Counsel comes in. And now we're going to spend a little bit of time on that. So you talked a little bit about it just briefly, but tell us what, what is Pure Counsel? Pure Counsel, in its essence, is a marketplace for on-demand legal services, right? Usually when you need something done, you have a legal question, you need a new document drafted, an employment agreement, a real estate purchase and sale agreement, one of two things happens. Either you go and ask someone for a referral because you don't happen to either know your own attorney or you're looking for someone, then you're limited to whoever is basically they know, now that's your new connection, or you go and search the internet, which is... Nowadays, a complete cluster of just SEO games that you'd like to believe that the first person at the top of the list <clears throat> when you search is going to be the best lawyer, but it's not. It's just marketing, and that's with everything nowadays. So beyond that, the analogy I like to give is I really know very little about cars, right? But if my car starts having a problem and starts making a noise, and I go see a mechanic, and the mechanic says, Jordan, listen, your carburetor's shot. It's going to cost you $2,500 to replace it. I have no independent ability to assess, challenge, validate any of that. So it's either I take them at their word or I go now and spend my time to go and get another opinion, go to another mechanic. And now I'm kind of going down this process, wasting my time on something that realistically there should be a better way. Now, second to that is that, as we all know, most lawyers nowadays still abide by the archaic billable hour. And I will be the first to admit there are uses and times where the billable hour is necessary. Litigation, complex mergers and acquisitions, things where there's a lot of variables that you can't really control or predict. But for a lot of other things in the law, 
whether it's certain documents that have become, let's be honest, somewhat form-based, right? A lot of lawyers, they play Mad Libs and they fill in the blank. Or there's certain questions that lawyers have either answered over and over again or have the ability to access that answer and information in a very quick manner. And rather than actually charging by the hour, which only incentivizes spending more time to solve a client's problem, I believe that the flat fee alternative fee arrangement should be more of the standard than the exception. Because what the flat fee does, it rewards value-based uh, work, right? If I can do the same thing in 30 minutes that most lawyers will bill for three hours, I as a lawyer should not have to be reluctant or think about, well, even though I could probably do this in a faster way or something more efficient, it'll actually make me less money to be more efficient. So Pure Counsel is using a curated network of attorneys that I'm personally selecting myself. And that's why it's starting in Florida only. It's because after over a decade of practicing down here, I've met a lot of great lawyers. I've worked with a lot of great lawyers. And these are the people who I would send people to if someone came to me and asked. And so you have this network of qualified attorneys who now have the ability that when a user like you, you go on and you say, you know what? I need a new real estate purchase and sale agreement. You can go on, it's free for you to create an account. You get to make uh, as many posts as you'd like for new projects. It's anonymized, so it doesn't say it's Kevin Tasher asking for this work product. And when you select the state you're in, the area of law, now all of a sudden you can create any type of other conditions, whether you have budgetary constraints, specific language you'd like to find an attorney in, or any deadlines. Once it's posted, the attorneys who are registered in that licensed jurisdiction, who practice in that area of law, it'll be designated on their pure counsel profile, similar to a LinkedIn profile, they get a notification. That notification says, hey, lawyer, there's a new project up for bid that is right down, right up your alley. Lawyer then gets to go on the platform and they bid on the project, flat fee. No hourly, flat fee. And to the extent the lawyer thinks they need more information, that the description isn't enough for them to make an informed bid, they have the ability to open up a dialogue box with the user and say, hey, I see you have a need for a new employment agreement, but I need to understand, are there you know, restricted covenants involved? Is this a company that has multiple you know, locations? Whatever the information is that that lawyer needs becomes a dialogue. And assuming now that the lawyer makes a bid after having that information and the user accepts that bid, the user's information then now transfers to the lawyer, their real name, their telephone number, their email, and the lawyer performs what's called a conflict check. Conflict check is by ethics rules to make sure that they have not been representing someone else adverse to them or any of those things that would prohibit them from fairly representing them. Assuming that clears, they engage in attorney-client relationship just like any other traditional manner. Now it's based on the term that they've agreed upon, the flat fee, and within the scope of all the communication they've had as a defined scope of work. Awesome. You know, I could just think I was actually talking with someone last night at, at one of my investor clubs and they're talking about having to sue a seller for specific performance. And uh, I was like, I think I have the perfect solution for you because realistically, they're not suing. They're going to need an attorney to probably file a legal demand or maybe just file a Liz pendants. Uh, it'll be quick. They're not going to actually take it to court and, uh, unless it gets super, super far in the process. And I was like, I have this solution for you. But more importantly, also for our clients, investors, agents thinking, I, I see it from a standpoint of seller representation. I see it from the standpoint of escrow disputes, uh, filing a, just a letter. You know, typically a letter gets it done. Uh, I see it for quick claim deeds, mortgage doc prep, land trust prep. You know, a lot of these are, like you said, they're forms. They're fill in the blank, put in a couple of names and generate the document. I could do it myself, but I'm not an attorney. So, you know, we we basically toss that business out the door where now I know we're going to work together and figure out how we can get the platform to where we can introduce the client to the attorney uh, and get them to to engage and, and make this uh, a lot easier for them. So I think it's going to be great. It's going to be a wonderful platform. Thank you. Uh, well, just real quick, Kevin, because you hit on two really important points there. Number one is... Um, we are working towards uh, some aspect of allowing litigation on the platform. And, and it would be along the lines of what you just said. It would be, have to be defined scopes of within the process of litigation, whether it's the demand phase or it's kind of getting through discovery or motion to dismiss. So that's something that's important that we're working on. 
But two is it goes back to what you said about, you know, there's a lot of people who say, well, Jordan, isn't there legal zoom out there? Isn't there, you know, these other platforms. And, and the reality is this, there's a lot of people who, even if they went on the internet and they were to download a form for a new deed or a new uh, asset transfer agreement or whatever you want to call it, they don't necessarily feel comfortable doing this without the support of a trained attorney. And, and I think that's important to understand is that this is not about trying to diminish the legal market or trying to undermine the value of legal services. In fact, some people will tell me, you know, Jordan, I, I don't think this is the right thing to do. You're, you're trying to sell cheap law. This is not about discount law. What this is about is actually having a group or curated network of attorneys who have the ability to actually be competitive in a marketplace and provide transparency on fees that otherwise, usually one person has to go and get a rate or a proposal from an attorney and spend a lot of time, if they even have the time, to then go and try to field out different opinions or, or proposals from different attorneys. So yeah, I mean, I look at it from as a standpoint of affordable legal services at a price that you can afford, right? It's it's just making it more affordable. And, you know, well, we well, see it well, all the time. The beauty is affordable is in the eye of the beholder, right? And part of, like I said, when a user is creating a post, it has the ability to say, here's my budget. So if my budget is $2,500, well, guess what? No attorney can come in higher than that. And if there's no attorneys who bid under that at all, at least now I have some idea and understanding that, you know what? This is probably gonna cost me more. And, and you've tested the market. So there's more information, the value of information that can even be gleaned from that. Yeah, I mean, we've seen seller doc prep and, and representation anywhere from $500 to $2,500. So there's clearly room for negotiations in, in that side of the business. Uh, and plus, like you said, this is gonna just get, I get quick claim deed referrals every single day. And it's like, it's easy. I could fill out the form. I know what a deed looks like. We fill out deeds all day long, but we're not allowed unless we're doing a closing. So it's just, it's a lost opportunity, not financially for me, it's a lost opportunity to just be able to help our client and give them a solution to a problem. So um, it, it's gonna be great. What, what, what would you say the number one challenge you had in this process? Because I know we talked about this probably a year ago, I think you showed me the first video, I think at maybe last year's farmer's market or something. So obviously it was going through a, a process. What, what's the number one challenge you had? Well, it's a couple of things, but, but I'll say the number one challenge is uh, timing, right? Is, you know, this is something I've been working on for two and a half years, but there's only so much you can do when you have a full-time job that it's not about just kind of like, you know, balancing your time. It's about, you know, you can't really necessarily work at a company or a law firm while they're paying you for your time and you want to be starting some business on the side. So this has been on the back burner for, for quite a while. Until I, you know, either in my mind believed that this was something that I think the the world was ready for, and it was something that I think I was ready for, and and only until that decision was made is then I had to go through the process of getting approved by the Florida Bar. Uh, it's called it, the Florida Bar designates pure counsel as what's called a qualifying provider, essentially a matchmaking service, and I couldn't move on to get registered by the Florida Bar until. I had ready, been ready to make a decision and leave my, my past firm to start actually putting this into practice. So it's kind of like there's been this, this, uh, this wall up against me and it only until that was lifted that now we're off to the races. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm, I'm excited for you. Uh, so let's talk a little bit, you know, because a lot of times I'm, I'm in a lot of these networking groups and I see app creators and developers, but the app creator is typically not the attorney. What, what would you think the difference of like your experience? You know, I always tell people like my experience as owning a title company is great, but my experience in being a firefighter and bringing that into the entrepreneurship world is what makes it that much better and what sets me apart from my competition. So what would you think being an attorney versus just being someone who came up with an app developer and how does that add more or uh, obviously more value to what you're doing you know with this platform that's a great question and and i think that's why this idea and this platform has resonated so much and so deeply with me is because it's not you know i i went to business school i love technology it's not as if i was creating an app you know to sell shoes right something that i just thought there may be a need for in the marketplace and i just thought it was a cool concept this is something that is born out of my own experience 
my own expertise and my own kind of need for something like this, or at least the, the feeling of there's a need for something like this for myself and, and my peers. And I think that's when real, you know, innovation I think can occur is when people have the subject matter expertise, they've defined a problem, they've found a potential solution for it, and they have the passion to put all those things together to actually turn it into something that is beyond just an idea. Okay. Let's, so let's talk. We talked a lot about the user and about the platform. Uh, I also see it not only will, will I be able to send this to clients uh, to set up, but what about all my friends that are attorneys? You know, I'm in all these networking groups and I'm always hunting for them opportunities for business. So you obviously have the, the um, energy from the entrepreneurial standpoint of it. What is your vision for to, to build the entrepreneurial landscape for these attorneys, attorneys that want to come on? To, you know, what would your sales pitch be to this attorney that I know that is looking for more business. They join the chamber and they join BNI networking groups and all these things. And they're like, I need more business or they're doing SEO and all this stuff. And not any one thing is really working. What, what's the difference with your platform? I'm going to, I'm going to pitch you like I've pitched some of the attorneys who have now already signed up. And, and the, the good news is, is i have more attorneys who I can even allow on the platform right now. And that's because I've committed to only allowing a, a limited number of attorneys per practice area in the state until I can drive more demand, right? Because I don't want lawyers to be in such a competitive field that when they make a bid, they're up against six other attorneys. It has to be somewhat fair, and that'll be a, a, a balancing number as demand grows, more attorneys will be let on. So the attorneys who I've already spoke with have already joined in. The reason I think they're engaged and they, they like this idea is for a couple of reasons. Number one is, when you talk about networking, you go to BNI, you go to these other bar events, whatever the case may be, you're spending money, sometimes not a small amount of money, with the hope of meeting someone that one day they will either give you business or refer someone to you to do business. Two is that you are now also spending your time to have to go and to do all that networking, right? And your time as a lawyer is valuable. Whether you're billing by the hour or not, it is valuable. So now imagine what I say is, let's say you were to now be on a platform and consider it akin to online dating, right? Do you want to go and spend your time at, you know, out at a club or at a bar to try and hope that you find someone? Or would you rather be on a platform that you know the people who are using this have an immediate need right now for legal services? Not someday in the future, not hopefully that you plant a seed. They have it right now. And you have the ability to interface with them and make a proposal that if they accept it, you have new business. So you are now in a, in a control seat as opposed to going out and hunting. You have the prey or the animal, whatever you want to call it. Prey is probably not a good word. You have the client coming to you. And not only do they have them coming to you, but you now have also more visibility. Because even if your proposal isn't selected, well, guess what? Now this user has had a chance to review your profile. They've looked at your credentials, your experience. And now there's awareness. They know who you are. They have the ability that if these clients wanted to, they can contact you off the platform. I have no problem with that. In fact, people say to me, Jordan, well, aren't you worried that if someone uses an attorney that later on they'll only call it attorney and won't go through pure counsel? I say, not at all. I would love that. Number one, it means it's proof concept that it's working. Two, it means that the lawyer is actually getting a benefit that I'm hoping that they get by subscribing to the platform. And three is that if that user wants to go to that lawyer and continue to use them. They'll do that. But I still think in most cases, especially in business uses, it's not personal. So if I'm continuing to like you and I say, you know what, Jordan, you did great work for me. And I have this additional thing that I need done, but I'm going to go put it up on pure counsel. And I would love for you to bid on it. But if someone else comes in at a dramatically lower price, well, again, it's nothing personal. It's business. I'm, I'm going to do what's best for my business. So I think it still adds value from so many different angles, but for lawyers, especially who their livelihood is dictated by the amount of business they generate, which let's be frank here, there's a lot of lawyers who are not good business generators. And it's not because there's anything wrong with them or anything, but being a quote rainmaker is not easy. It's not something that everyone is accustomed to. And even, you know, people say, well, so I guess it's only good for solo practitioners or small law firms. I say, no. In fact, we have lawyers who have signed up from relatively good-sized, well-known firms. And the reason for that is because 
This has nothing to do with what firm you're at. This is a business generating platform. And so if your goal as an attorney is to work your way up the ladder and demonstrate that you have what it takes to keep bringing in business and be a partner at a law firm, all you need to do is show, I just got a new client. They're paying me X number of dollars to perform work. That's it. There's nothing else beyond that. So for lawyers, I think it's a no brainer. And especially for the lawyers right now in the beginning, I'm not here to just take their money and you know run off into the sunset. I've told them all very candidly, I'm giving them all 90 days runway free. Go play with it. I hope you get as much business as possible. And after that, if you think there's value there and you enjoy it and you'd like to see it moving forward, great, we'll have a conversation and we can figure out where to go from there. I want this to be a tool that has an organic growth, real genuine interest and value to the people who use it on both sides of the platform. And I recognize it's going to be a long-term project and I'm not here, you know, for the short term. All right. Awesome. All right. I like to try and keep these to, to 30 or so minutes. I have two more quick questions uh, aside from the app. So hopefully everyone will download the app, whether you're a user for free and start posting your needs and, and challenging the attorneys out there to bid on it. So, you know, you're getting a good deal. By I have one point of clarification really, real quick, Kevin. So right now it is on a web base, right? The app is in development because what I was told by a developer, and I think correctly so, is that you want to do the web base first because the app is just drawing from the back end of the website. Right. So for now, you go to purecouncil.com, whether it's on your iPad, your phone, your computer. And what I do personally until the app is completed is actually just in on Safari on an iPhone, you can actually save a bookmark to an icon on your main screen of your phone. So it's essentially just an app without a app that you download from the app. Right. Yeah, we do the same with our uh, closing cost calculator. Uh, I actually have a friend of mine that has, it's kind of the same thing. It's like a dating app, uh, but he did it for business coaches. So basically he partners consumers with business coaches. So instead of attorneys, it's business coaches that pay for a platform and he matches clients looking for coaches and and puts them together so again it's a great concept and uh you know i wish you much success and, and hopefully people watching whether you're an attorney you want to sign up as a uh affiliate there or you are a user and you want to sign up for legal work hopefully you check it out two last questions what's your favorite book and why mm, it's my favorite book and why uh you know what it's going to be a, a strange answer my favorite book is hatchet okay right. Hatchet is a book that I think most people had to read growing up. It's a story about a kid who goes on a plane ride to see his father. The plane goes down in the middle of the Canadian forest and he has to survive as a young kid with basically only, you know, a hatchet that he was given by his mother as part of his trip. And, and the reason I think it always has been such a, a book that's resonated with me is aside from the fact of now reading it to my kids and kind of building it forward is there's something that I find so interesting about just the act of survival and being able to use whatever the tools are around you to accomplish your needs, whether it's something, you know, for your food, your, where you sleep or however it is you use that, that voice in your mind that we all have that we've all evolved from to figure out how to make your life better or to get around problems with what your surroundings are. And, and I think a lot of that, if you kind of boil it down is essentially why I love the idea of pure counsel is it's taking something uh, that it doesn't exist or with things that maybe pieces of which exist and putting it together to solve a bigger problem. Which is, I, I still don't understand why most schools from a young age don't teach entrepreneurship and banking and finance and, you know, they teach science and social studies. So I still don't get it, but that's a whole nother story. School wasn't for me. Entrepreneurship was. My last question for you. You're talking to today's tomorrow. Should they become an attorney? Yes. I, Why? When when people hear the word attorney, I think they have in their mind this, you know, a, a vision or a very kind of a traditional word of what has for time immemorial been the perception of an attorney. And if there's one thing that I can tell you is that there are over probably a hundred different flavors of what it really means to be an attorney. Because there's, in my mind, an attorney is just a way of thinking. It is a set of tools that gives someone the ability to see the world in a little bit of a different way and to be able to provide insight into things that are not the normal way of thinking. And so that's why, whether you go into business, whether you want to go into public policy, whether you want to go into government, 
whatever the field you may be, you don't necessarily have to be sitting in a courtroom or sitting in an office at a law firm drafting documents. It's about using the skill set to be able to solve problems and, and improve the world around you. So I think it's really important that people start to see it for more than what it is. Because I myself, I'll be the very candid with you. When I was younger, I, I only saw lawyers in the traditional sense, and it was not something I ever wanted to be. I, I was an advertising undergrad. I was a creative type. I love technology. I love art, all these things, entertainment. And it was only my mom who saw for what it really should have been and told me, you know, whether you want to practice law or not in the traditional sense, I think law school could really benefit you. And she was 1000% right. So thank you, mom. It's in interesting. It's one of the only regrets I have in this business is that I didn't become an attorney because it, being an attorney gives me uh, a, a lot more to be able to do a lot more tools in my toolbox. Uh, and, and it's one of my only regrets. So uh, I appreciate you coming out today and, and doing this, uh, you know, this podcast for people. You, you shared a lot. Hopefully the users and, and watchers and listeners check out purecouncil.com to, you know, just changing the way the world sees the, le the legal business. So thank you very much. You were fantastic Thanks, today. And uh, any last words? No, I just want to thank you again. I, I love what you do. I think you have your own world of innovation. And, you know, it's nice to see kind of people doing, you know, changing how the things are usually done. And so so I give you a lot of credit for that. And just thank you for all you do for the community as well. Just, you know, as a commissioner, like I said, it's uh, it, it, for people like you to kind of get involved in things. It's it's really appreciated from our end because, you know, when they say it takes a village, you know, we need people like you to be a part of that village. Like you said, there's a thousand different flavors. You just got to figure out what flavors for you. So hopefully those watching see the value in the flavor of Pure Counsel and uh, set up an account. And as always, give me the feedback. I always love to hear any guests I have on. You use the platform, use the service. Feel free to give me the feedback and say, yeah, this is cool. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, maybe something in between. And uh, we always love to hear feedback of the services and products of, of our guests. So Jordan, yeah. thank you. And, Thank you. Uh, On that note, Kevin, I'd also like to say I too would love to hear everyone's feedback. So any questions, comments, criticisms, whatever it may be, info at purecouncil.com. Awesome. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Real Estate Podcast. We'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.